All right, bang, bang. Today's Wednesday. It's April 27th. Welcome to the Dog Walk presented by Barstool Sports. I'm sitting down here with Peter from Arctic Circle Taxidermy. Did I get that right? You got that right. Arctic Circle Taxidermy. On Irving Park Road here in Chicago. Um, we're going to talk about stuffing some fucking animals. Huh? We're going to get into it. Thanks for having me here, Eddie. Big fan. Yeah, no, I'm glad he came in. I uh, you, you told me about this drunkenly at a bar one day, and I was like, fuck yeah. I knew uh, I knew I wanted to do it, and you know, through some backlog communication, we made it happen, so I'm happy. Supporting local business. We yes. were both out there, yep. Exactly. So I think a lot of people, when you, when you tell people you're a taxidermist, are people like, whoa. Well, yeah. how many people are like, what the fuck is that? That's the thing. They either love it, yeah. they hate it, or they have no idea what I'm talking about. Yeah. And if that's the case, they just go, oh, okay, and they walk away. That's how you know they have no idea what I'm talking about. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Other than that, you know, they love it, got a million questions for you, or not a fan at all. I assume some people just think you do taxes. Have you ever gotten that? I got that a lot. I get those <laughs> calls a lot. Taxi yeah. driver, I get that sometimes, too. Oh, really? Yep. That's great. That's great. So... Majority wise, percentage wise, how would you break it down? Like, don't like versus don't know. Mm, it's getting to be more kind of like and kind of see it as an art and kind of respect what you do. Mm -hmm. But then you still have that share that are wearing leather shoes of a leather bag and they're like, no, well, I'm vegan. You, I don't know how you do that. Yeah, yeah, kind of yeah. Thing, you know? they, get, they get a little upset, huh? Definitely. What should you do to the animals? Mm -hmm. um, okay, so how did you get into it? Well, I'm a second generation taxidermist, so I got into it from my dad. We've actually been over at Irving and Central since 87, since before I was born. So that's how I got into it. You know, coming out of high school, didn't really know what I wanted to do. I got a couple of siblings. They both went into the fine arts. My brother plays like every instrument. He's a music teacher now. Sister, opera singer. She went to school oh, for wow. that. Now she's doing singing at churches, stuff like that. And I had odd at end jobs, lifeguard, made trophies, stuff like that. And I just started apprenticing for my, for my dad. And I really fell in love with it there, you know, setting your own hours every day, something different. Mm -hmm. It's a really unique, unique job. And there's not a lot of people. Okay. So you really love getting it. into it. You love what you do. You would say, I'd say, yeah, I'd say yeah. I love what I do. No, nice. That's good. That's yeah. always a great thing. Yeah. Um, yeah. so how'd your dad get into it? He was a hunter he liked sculpting and like a lot of first generation taxidermists it was kind of a hobby at first for him and then uh he made the jump to try to do it professionally what did he do beforehand uh uh ta a insurance adjuster okay so, wow yeah how about that it goes from <laughs> adjusting insurance to fucking yep stuffing the animals yeah so you've been doing it for how many years then professionally 10 okay. Lic licensed state of illinois all that Oh, nice. Okay. So then how old are you? I'm 28. 28. Okay. Yeah, so, ten, since, so since you were 18. Wow. Yep. And you've been doing it before that, I assume, is it yep. in terms of capacity, you said? Yeah, definitely. Wow. So um, was this something where, like growing up, like I assume you had a lot of this kind of things in your house, right? Believe it or not, no. We don't have, even right now, we don't have any taxidermy in the house. Really? Yeah. Wow. I think it's because a lot of guys do it out of their house when they're starting up and whatnot. And I figure they would, you know, out of the garage or something mm -hmm. like that. But since we have a, a studio, a big storefront, you know, showroom up at Irving and Central, we Just keep everything keep there. Keep everything there. Yeah. That's surprising. I assume every taxidermist would have like a cottage that's just loaded with shit like this. Most of them do, I think. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm sure. So you said you got licensed. What's the legality of this? Like, how does this work? How much goes into making sure that you're certified to do this kind of thing? You have to be, if you're going to do it professionally, taking people's stuff in, you have to be state licensed. And if you want to work on federally protected stuff, you have to have a federal license too. Okay. What's... When that happens, it means the fish and game pretty much who oversees what we do. They'll be able to come in at any time and check, you know, everything I do, my whole storefront, my freezers, I got six or seven freezers right now. Everything, you know, on the wall, make sure everything's tagged, make sure everything's taken legally, you know, we're doing everything right. How big are these freezers? They're chest freezers like you'd find, you know, like, yeah, like you see a, in like a garage a in Chicago or something yeah, like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, wow. And they just got fucking animals they, in them? <laughs> my freezers are a little different than most. Yeah, <laughs> on top I'll have That's pretty crazy, spare parts dude. for polar bear. Or I'll have, you know, all kinds of crazy stuff. Damn, dude. We dude, have to be able to mock stuff up too. Like uh, some of what we do is... Uh, prop work for like TV shows and movies because we're in the city. It's not all like deer heads or bring me a bear or something like that. Mm -hmm. Like I get my fair share of that, but also we get a call 
you know, last minute where I have to mock up something for a TV show or a movie in a couple of days. And when you say mock up, that means just like a, a fake one. I can either do completely artificial, uh -huh. like well, we can get into that with some of the crazy jobs, or I could do you know a hybrid where I use some real feathers to make something you know completely different. But yeah, the prop work is definitely the the crazy stuff. So, I mean, that's why. I mean, I, obviously, I. I know what you do, and I, but it's just weird to think that. You know, <laughs> I, when I see one of those deep freezers, I think of like popsicles and pizza bagels. Yeah, <laughs> and you just got a fucking tiger in there. Yeah, that's, that's yeah. fucking crazy. Well, not a, not a tiger. We can't have that. But oh, you can't I got, do tigers. No. no. So if someone brought it over and it was like, you're not certified. They, or? No, it has to be. There's all kinds of legality stuff. So something like that it would have to be. The tiger would have had to been done before like 72 or something like that. Oh, so we really? can work on old ones. I've worked on old ones before, but yeah, you have to have paperwork with all that kind of exotic stuff. Holy shit. Yeah. It's like I get calls all the time. Hey, uh, a hawk flew into my window. Could I do anything with it? And no, I can't. Really? really? You don't own it. Yeah. You have to call up Department Wait, so of Fish and Game and see if they'll give you a salvage permit or something like that. And that way I'll be able to work on it. So tiger stopped when you said? I believe it was 1972 before then. But you said you've worked on one, so this is you, just you can work going. on older ones if you okay, have paperwork so on them. They've been done yeah. before, yeah, like an yeah. old tiger rug or something like that, and the claws falling off. Oh, I got you, you, got you, got you. Yeah, we do a lot of restoration, a lot stuff of touch like ups. That. Grandpa's old fish fell off the wall. You know, I want to put the fins back on it, or yeah, old, damn, old so that, deer stuff like that. So that shit's probably pretty valuable, huh? Mm -hmm. The second second hand market for people who have these that can't be worked on anymore. Yeah, what definitely. else is in that? Uh, Polar bears. Those are going up and up. There. You can't do polar bears anymore. I believe you could hunt them in Norway. Still, you can't. You can't hear anymore. So, like the only new ones coming in are from overseas, and I don't believe you could import them. Those no. laws are constantly changing. Like with ivory, used to be okay to have it. Now you can't have it anymore. Really? Yeah. So do you worry about that? That someday the laws are just going to change so drastically that it's going to kill your business. No, they would never shut down. No, it would never be changed completely where I couldn't do anything. You know yeah. I mean, there's always going to be hunting. And, you know, most of the conservation money comes from hunters, believe it or not, when they get their licenses and all that. All mm -hmm. that money goes into conservation. Yeah. So you get people who are complaining about taxidermy and, you know, don't don't like it. But they're not they're not out there donating to the wildlife funds like the hunters are really keeping it going. Do you deal with that, though? Like, has PETA ever showed up to your no. store? Oh, thankfully not, no. but I, like I was telling you before, I'm open by appointment, so yeah. they might have come when I haven't been there. But but still, though, I don't understand why people get mad at you. You're, I mean, you might be a hunter, but you're just taking it and you're doing something with it. A lot of times they don't understand, and you can just try to educate them. But you know what I mean? That's like... That, that's so ass backwards. I don't know if people... A little bit, yeah. So it's, it's interesting yeah. that people would even get mad at you. That surprises me. Yeah. Uh, that's actually very surprising. So you said you have these people that could pop in your store whenever. Do they actually do that? Mm -hmm. They will pop yeah, in? Yeah. Really? And definitely. what are they exactly looking for? Just to make sure you're not fucking with one of those hawks that flew into a exactly. window? Exactly. Making sure I'm not taking in stuff like that or stuff that was poached or taken, you know, illegally. They'll take a look at my deers, make sure they're all, you know, all harvested legally. They'll take a look at the tags I put down. Take a look at my freezers, make sure I don't have anything I shouldn't have in there. Now, are you legally obligated if someone brings something that's not tagged or not done the right way? Are you supposed to call on them? Legally obligated? I don't know. Usually I would. Just to, well, what I'll do is a lot of people, pe a lot of times people don't know. You know, what happens is they find something on the side of the road that got hit or whatnot, and they'll call me. They'll pick it up without knowing. And the only thing I could do is tell them, hey, call the guys over at Fish and Game. Usually they'll pr they're pretty cool. They'll tell you what to do. And sometimes they'll even pick it up. Yeah. One so, time we did a uh, an eagle for a girl. She was a Native American girl. And sometimes they're allowed to have, uh, you know, permits where they could have them worked on. If it's for, like, religious pur purposes or something like that. Hmm. They have to have special paperwork. This time it was from the Department of the Interior. Damn, okay. The Eagle Repository. So, you're, so back to what you just said. You're telling me people are bringing roadkill to you? Sometimes they'll call. Yeah. yeah. Sometimes they'll call. What's the weirdest roadkill you got? We don't. We don't really. A lot of times it's stuff like that where it's stuff I can't take in. Take in. So. Oh no. So no. not even like one time I hit a car. One time I hit an armadillo. 
No. Nah. You wouldn't be able to do that? <laughs> About that. Dude, it was Usually crazy. when you hit something like that, it's pretty far gone, too, where I could work on it. Dude, that, kinda... that fucker sat on the side of the road for weeks, I swear. Yeah, death wish, no? Yeah, it was crazy, but dude, he, like, popped. I exactly. Mean, yeah. <laughs> I got to put that back together. That's a little bit tough. Yeah, I but... bet. Damn. Okay, so what's the, um, what's the most common item that comes to you? That isn't allowed to be worked on, is it? A, a deer, I assume? It's birds, probably. Birds, okay. That'll, people call me, hey, I had a little songbird or something flew into my window. Could I have something? Could I have it worked on? A duck or something like that. And you have to tell them no. Mm -hmm. And that's, is there anything that's fair game that's you see that's just dead? Usually we don't get that call too much. People really? picking up a squirrel and wanting it mounted. Usually when people want something done, it's got a little bit more personal value to them, you know? Yeah. So they, they take it. But if I, saw, if I saw a blue jay... Not, I mean, I, I probably wouldn't, but I could see someone wanting a blue jay, and that's a common one we get. But no, legally, couldn't couldn't do it. Really? Yeah. But if you call, is there a way to get get it the back end, the back back door? There is. If you're, they do exemptions. If you're like a uh, teaching center or nature center or something like that, if you're teaching people with it, but you'd have to you'd have to check with them. You okay. Know, we don't get a lot of uh, a lot of that paperwork in, so I'm not sure how much they give it out. Damn. So it sounds like you got a lot of fucking rules. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And how much of the battle is that for you to make sure that you got to cover your ass versus like the actual crafting of this these animals? You just got to be mindful, yeah. you know, you got to be mindful. You don't ignore it at all. You know, you got to keep yourself up to date on the changing the rules and laws. But that's part of the occupation. Definitely. Mm -hmm. How many are there in Chicago? Do you know? Tax service? Yeah. Uh, I think a handful. Not, not too many at all, yeah. Not too many? And yeah. you said you're book solid, huh? Oh, you're super busy. Yeah, really? Really backed up. So what's the most common um, thing brought to you? Being in the city, we'll do a mix. Like, there's hunting seasons for sure. We get deer, we get birds, stuff like that. A lot of restoration. We do pets, believe it or not. You know, reptiles, birds, fish, dogs, cats, even uh, prop work for TV shows and movies, uh, all kinds of stuff. Mm -hmm. Skull cleaning. Uh, have you ever heard of uh, Dermested Beetles? I have not. I got those the over there. What the fuck they're, is that? They're beetles that do the cleaning for you. They eat everything but the bone. Oh, really? Yeah, little little tiny beetles. I keep them in tanks. Really? Yeah. Damn. And people want these fucking... Well, people will go hunting for a deer or something like that, and they'll mm -hmm. want a euro mount. I'm sure you've seen like a skull on a wall before. Yeah. Well, the best way to clean the skull would be nature's way, a beetle. Oh, he really? goes in there, eats everything organic for you. Well, that's cool. You could boil it, but a lot of times you lose a lot of that detail. A lot of uh, detail in the nose and the nostrils and all that. Really? That's a, that, damn, I don't think people know that. Not a lot do, no. A lot of people like that. A lot of uh, museums started doing that. Getting those like little tiny bones that you could do for birds and all kinds of crazy stuff. They articulate and put back together, and there's really no other way to do it except for for beetles and stuff like that. So how? So you'll just throw this beetle in the deep freezer with the? Mm -mm. No, you have to have them climate controlled and all that. So I'll have kind of like tanks, like fish tanks, mm -hmm. big tanks. And what you'll do is you'll remove, you'll skin off as much skin as you can, and put uh, put whatever you want eaten in there. So the skull with all the meat on it, you put it in the tank there, and they'll do do all the work for you. Damn. And how many would have, just like, say an average size buck, how many will? There's thousands of beetles in there. Really? Tens of thousands, yeah. And do you, like, are you watching this? Like, are you at the glass tapping? No. No. no? It'll take a couple days. It'll take two, depending how many you got in there, two, three days. You keep them, keep them in, like, a dark room. They don't, like, light too much. Is it, like, fascinating, or is it kind of, like, weird? It's fascinating. They have time lapses of them on YouTube. If yeah, you're I was that's yeah. that was my next question. Was Go on YouTube, to, time type lapse. in Dermastead Beetle time lapse, and they'll take something crazy like a snake, and they'll show you a 24-hour time lapse from, you know, how the bones get cleaned off. Holy on there. shit! And so the reasoning for this is, I mean, I'm sure you love them. Like <laughs> Employee not, of the month, yeah, yeah, <laughs> right, yeah. Fucking those guys. Yeah. How much is it? How much are they? What are they? They're not a lot. You can find them on. Uh, I think I got mine off eBay or something like that. People keep them. The only thing is you have to have a spot for them, and you have to make sure they're not getting out. And you I mean, if they get out, they're eating your ass, right? They're eating everything. No, I'm a little too fast for them. Like really? you know, oh, okay. But yeah, any, they'll you... eat wood. They'll eat anything organic. Oh, really? Everything, yeah. They'll just start chomping away. Yeah. Are these the things that were eating the American Eagle back in the day? 
No. Or that termites, maybe. No, I don't think it was. Yeah, I think it was termites. Yeah. They usually hang out in tropical climates, wait for stuff to die, and then get to mm-hmm. it. They're not very fast at all. Yeah, I meant the American Eagle, the roller coaster, by the way, from Six Flags. <laughs> Sorry, I should have. <laughs> no, when you say that to a tax term, it's I'm picturing a different uh, American yeah, Eagle. No, yeah. remember that story though? It, no, from, I don't. Oh, the American Eagle. The I remember the roller coaster. Yeah. Old wooden roller coaster yeah. at Six Flags. I think like termites were getting after it. They one had to point. be termites. Yeah, wood, you think yeah. so? Yeah. We deal with termites a lot. No, no, no. More, more domestic beetles than yeah, termites yeah, yeah. in my business. Damn, these fucking beetles! This is that's that's fascinating. <laughs> yeah, that's a fun one. So, how much time will that save you, these beetles? A lot of time. Yeah, a lot of time. Uh, it's not so much the time they save me, though; it's the detail work they do. So it's you know? just it's just a better craft. It's a better quality than yeah. anything I could do. Yeah. Damn, that's awesome. Yeah, that's fucking sick. I'll be honest; I did not know that. If I don't they think... were a little smarter, they'd open up their own shop and put me out of business. You're those right. Things, I'm telling you, those fucking beetles. Yeah. And we just where do you get them from? The, the I got my batch off eBay. I ended up trading a girl something for him oh you did trade i did a little trade yeah she was looking for a skull i think i gave her a white tail skull or something like that i had in stock do you trade often as much as i can you know uh-huh. I, yeah i like that i love that shit bartering shit that's yeah, I great got a couple bears tickets last year for doing a guy's skull <laughs> oh really <laughs> yeah uh, fucking that's that's the lost art in america it I'll really is the barter yeah the no, barter's got, great and a lot of the you know a lot of my clientele comes in you know and working class they love to do it too so yeah i love that that's like um what was that show they would trade like a pen and they trade it up to like oh a, yeah, an yeah. ATV. a car or a tv yeah. or something like that yeah. uh, that was that that shit's great we need more of that so i appreciate <laughs> that so if i came in there and i was like You'll make deals? Yeah, I'll make deals. Yeah, you bring me some merch, definitely. <laughs> I love Maybe that. a beef kit or something? Yeah, for sure. we'll get you a beef kit. TastrealChicago.com. <laughs> All right, hey, let's take a break from Peter right now. Let's talk about Roman because uh, if you're looking for a way to last longer in bed, there's no better way than Roman, everybody. You guys know the drill by now. Um, if you're doing these foolproof methods, if you're thinking about, oh, I need to go to the taxidermy, get my, uh, my deer you know, filled or, you know, matted and framed and you need this and that, stop doing that because Roman is here and it's a clinically proven way to last longer in bed. It's effective, it's easy to use, and it's fast acting and it doesn't require a prescription. Roman could ship these swipes to you in discreet, unmarked packaging and each swipe packet is small enough to hide in your wallet for whenever you need it. They're super easy to use. Just take the swipes out of the packet, swipe it on, let it dry, you're good to go. That's it. Go to GetRoman.com slash dogwalk. To get $10 off when you choose a monthly plan, it's GetRoman.com slash dogwalk. One more time, GetRoman.com slash dogwalk. If you're having sex and you're not using Roman, you are doing yourself and your partner a disservice. You really are. I mean, this little swipe right here is going to make you last longer, and it's going to make everybody happy. So go use it, okay? Go do it. GetRoman.com slash dogwalk. All right, let's get back into it. So go back to back to pets. Yeah. A little weird, man. To each his own. Uh, personally, I wouldn't do it with my pet. You know, a lot of taxidermists don't do it at all because it's a oh, lot harder not. than doing something like a deer or something like that. You know, picture. You know, I know you're not a dog guy. Picture you have a cat. <laughs> you live with it for 10, 15 <laughs> years, and then you bring it in. <laughs> <laughs> trying to imagine me trying to mock up that look on the cat. That you've lived with for 15 years compared to a deer you go out oh my one god day. people are so it's so personal i would yeah fucking exactly oh that's my why god. most tax trimmers don't do it when i do i try to push them towards a sleeping position something natural and they'd be happy with you know i don't know if you've ever seen scrubs before but they had that dog in the tv show that was standing looking they'd always move it around and scare each other and it, oh so yeah but i've never seen scrubs no but i know uh what was it? Something about Mary? I think they had one of those. There was a dog in a cast or something like that. I've done them standing. I've done them looking. You know, I've done them every position you could think of. But I prefer to kind of steer them towards that sleeping position. It seems like they're generally more happy when you get something like that done. So dogs and cats are the main ones, obviously. Anything else? For pets, birds. Birds oh. are really popular. Parrots. You know, little, little, colorful birds. People have reptiles. Uh, See, I feel like those aren't that bad because those you see. Tax, you know, is taxidermed a word? Uh, no, no, I don't no? think so. <laughs> mounted, no. people say. You mounted, know? all right. Yeah. Those you see mounted, you know? Mm-hmm. But um, dogs and cats, you just don't see. That's too much. It's getting to be more popular. Is getting it? more and more of them in, yeah. I could see that. Yeah. I and mean, would, would you, t- I mean, how, like, <laughs> like, are they just bringing them in in, like, a jewel bag? 
sometimes I'll have to go pick them up from the vet if they get put down or something like that. Okay, and, that uh, seems good. Like anything with taxidermy, you have to... Time is of the essence, so a lot of times you have to get it into the freezer before, uh, you know, bacteria is not your friend with taxidermy if you're having something done. So if you go out hunting and you get a deer or something like that, the first thing you do, you field dress it. You know, you want to save the meat, you want to make sure that doesn't spoil, you want to save the hide. After they take the hide off it, they'll usually pop it in the freezer or they'll call me up and they'll bring it on in. What's like the, like what's the amount of time you could have it if I, if you shoot a deer? Depends on the weather. If it's yeah. cool out. A day or two, you might be able to leave it out. If it's not cool, if it's a hot day, you, you don't want to there. leave it out more than a day. Damn, man. That's – do you, people ever just come in bringing shit that stinks horribly? <laughs> Sometimes I've gotten it before if they don't know what they're doing. One time a guy brought me a whole deer, not skinned out or anything, in the back of his truck. Oh, really? go, What are you doing? Yeah. yeah. I don't, don't know. I'm in the city. I'm in Irving and Central. You can't do this, <laughs> man. Yeah, what the fuck? Yeah. So what about, um, what about, do you think, what's like the strangest request you've ever had? <sighs> that many, huh? yeah, yeah, everything's, I mean, everything's a little strange we do. If you yeah. look at it like that, we've done probably the prop work because yeah. it ends up being strange on purpose kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Like, uh, and they put CGI on top of it. Like one time we had to do a mock-up of a heron for a TV show, and they wanted it to look like the girl was eating it alive. So we had to kind of incorporate a bowl into the belly, hide it by the feathers, and they put watermelon in the bowl. And so it looked like when she was eating the watermelon, and they put CGI on top, she was eating the guts of the bird. Wow. It's a lot of crazy stuff well, like that. Crazy. Yeah, that's crazy. for I think, the Exorcist TV show. Oh, really? Exorcist TV show? Are you shipping these out, or I figured you're just doing Chicago Fire? We do. Shit. Yeah, we've done Fire PD. Uh, we used to ship out for American Horror Story. They did a couple seasons down oh, in New dude. Orleans for yeah. That's awesome. A couple seasons. Damn. So you're doing some fucking some real deal shows here. Yeah, we ship out. Well, we've done the B horror movies too. Like we got Bad Text or <laughs> probably all over Netflix. But yeah, we get the good, we get the good and the bad. We do them all. That's great. I, what, so why do they? That's you're just you do a good job like you, you. they move around those prop people you know oh, yeah. they they start off here in chicago they move down to another show they follow what the show goes so, and so and they'll like, keep us kind of secret so you so know the, they yeah, want to yeah. be the prop guy that's got all the they can get anything last minute so gotcha yeah. so your guy he's just been going to you for years and then yeah. wherever he moved to he's just still going to you most of our business is probably word of mouth so do you like prop work more than it's fun. I like prop work a lot. I love the creativity of that. I like doing restorations, you know, bringing stuff back. That's fun, too. They're all kind of rewarding in their own little way. The pets, you know, seeing people when they get them back, that's kind of rewarding, too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But the prop work, I, is that the uh, most lucrative, maybe, or no? Yeah. When they call, you know, two days at a time, hey, we don't care what it costs. It's for a big production company. Get it done. That's, that's where you. That's where that, you do well. That's that's nice. That's that's yeah. nice. You just you just bang them. They don't give a fuck. Rentals too. We do rentals. You know, somebody needs to do set decorating. They need a couple bears, a couple deer, stuff like that. Mm -hmm. But we got to keep a big showroom. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So there's probably so how big is it's not just like a storefront or you just got a it's lot of a storefront. Room? I'm running out of room. Uh, somebody wrote one time. It looks like the Smithsonian exploded. You know, <laughs> I, I really don't have wall space. Don't have floor space, but I keep as much as I can in there. Damn, dude. So what's how much is it for a deer? Like a shoulder mount deer? Yeah. Depending on size, you're looking at 500 and a half, something like that, 550. Okay. Because this, this shit ain't cheap. No, it's not. It's a lot of work, though. You know what I mean? It's yeah. not cheap, but tax service aren't really making off. You don't see any living too large. It's a lot of work involved. And uh, like any kind of art, you get what you pay for. Is it just you or do you have another employee? Just me right now. Just you. Yeah. Wow. So, I mean, you're, you control everything then. You're just like, you know. <laughs> I'm no red ed. I don't yeah. control everything, but. <laughs> so you're just. Uh, I set my own hours. Yeah. I work, yeah, that's nice. work as much as I can, get as much as I can done. Is it ever kind of dark though? You're just sitting in that room alone, just chopping these fucking that things big up? big on the podcast. That's why. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, that's true. You yeah, probably just I get, fucking hammer uh, these. And when I get real backed up, I'll bring a friend or friend in with me or something like that. Sometimes we got to do jobs where we go out to big trophy rooms and do cleanings on site. You know, these big houses or installation where 
we have to hang up a big piece, you know, or a couple big heads or something like that. Did it take you a long time to get used to the, you know, the gore? I don't know if it, how gory, gory is set. it. Yeah. It's not. Because you I, say they have to cut, like the people, once they get it, they have to cut it out and everything. Yeah. There's probably more gore in doing all that field dressing than what I do. Yeah. When you take the word and break it down, taxidermy, taxi, the moving, and dermy, the skin, it's a lot more kind of artwork in what we do. What we do is we send the, the skin off to get tanned. We don't do the tanning where we are. And that uh, that's kind of preserving the skin with the hair on it. So we'll get that back and then we'll do all our artwork. Like the form underneath the uh, the actual piece of taxidermy is a kind of like a polyurethane foam. You order those up and uh, you do your alterations by cutting them up and you know measuring them out. And you do the musculature on top with the clay. You know, you set the glass eyes and then, uh, then you put the skin over. But essentially, though, like you said, these these animals are all cut out when they come to you. Generally, yeah, yeah, there's not. I mean, there is gore involved. I'll usually have to finish, you know, either taking take the hide and removing the rest of the meat or something like that before I ship them off to get uh, tanned, salting them, stuff like that. But not not too, too bad. Nothing though. crazy. Nothing OK, probably. Cra well, what I define not crazy is probably a lot crazier yeah, than yeah, what other people yeah. would. But no, no, it didn't take too long getting used to seeing how I grew up with it i guess now say if one day they legalize you could do this to a human do you think you got that in you do i have the ability to absolutely if well, i'm doing animals but you never i never would no oh well, we get that call all the time you know prank calls hey could you do my grandma how much do you do my grandma <laughs> i mess around back with them yeah how much does she weigh you know yeah. how big is she <laughs> all right when grandma on? falls asleep i want you to take a soft tape measure and measure <laughs> around the belly and call me back look at the size of her wrists <laughs> yeah they usually yeah. hang up <laughs> wow what's um what's the toughest animal like what's like a, what's always a challenge you know it's going to take you a lot, little bit more time. some of the some of the little ones and some of the stuff uh you're always learning with taxidermy you know you never you never stop learning with something like that you're always each project you do you learn a little bit more on one of the ones i thought would be easier ended up being really really hard was articulating a snake skeleton after the beetles did the cleaning on it all the little ribs and all that fall off and you got to put them all back on with a little pair of tweezers and oh, you know yeah. i don't exactly have small fingers i'm <laughs> sitting there for hours and yeah. yeah that seems like it'd be annoying that was a tough one um they're all different all different some of the small stuff like the little birds and stuff like that it's tough for me because it's just the size but mm -hmm. and just so detailed and complex mm -hmm. huh big scaled fish like uh, arowana or alligator gar those end up being kind of hard to skin out do you ever get like uh, like spooked by the animals in the corner? Like you ever just kind of no no? <laughs> no you just never know. Like oh like oh. one day like if a real coyote was in there and it just kind of <laughs> threw you off your game for yeah. a second. I bring my dog with me to keep me company sometimes, so he's in there protection. Well, that's nice. He gets a little bit more spooked than I do. <laughs> I was gonna say, how does he laugh? That's fucked up for him. Yeah, a little bit. <laughs> he's looking around like, come on, don't do it to me. <laughs> yeah, dude, that's fucked up. Damn. Um, so just. I'm sure there's a lot of perks too, huh? Some hunters come back, give you a nice sack of beef jerky or some shit. Definitely, definitely. You get that. You get to uh, meet a lot of people that uh, I had a customer come in, you know, invited me on a hunt. The next year I went out with them. Oh, nice. Yeah. So you do, like so that. you hunt that. I've been hunting before, not as much as I'd probably like to a handful of times, but uh, yeah, being a second generation taxidermist, hunting isn't really what it got me into taxidermy, but. I do enjoy it. I've gone out before, yeah. Yeah, but it's good to see how it starts, right? Definitely, yeah. The cycle of everything. Definitely. That's crazy, man. And what about, uh, how about a big boar? You ever do a boar? I just got a boar. That's what I've been hunting for uh, last year. Oh, really? Yeah. Did you do the helicopter shit or did you just do regular? <laughs> a guy we went with, 75 years old, ended up taking one with a knife and a couple dogs. Really? Oh, man. that's. Where did you go? Down to Tennessee, Monterey, Tennessee. Those things are a terror down there, huh? Yeah. They're mean. It's a big problem. They are mean. People think they're nice little piggy, but no, they're scary. And they're scary. fucking things up, right? They'll cut you. Yeah. yeah. And, but even like uh, like agriculture and whatnot, like they're they're just causing havoc. On they're, yeah, they're a nuisance. Yeah. yeah. They're a pest. That's not good. Did, did we go throughout the whole process clear enough? I feel like, I feel like, is there anything else that, would, that people would like to know of how it, how it works? Like if someone brings you a deer head? Yeah, uh, go over it again, start to finish, kind of. Somebody goes out hunting, they'll uh, they'll harvest their animal. 
they'll field dress it out there, you know, take as much of the hide as they can off. But it, so what does that explain field dress? They'll take, you know, all the guts out and all that mm -hmm. and kind of cool out the, the body cavity so they can save the meat because that's the reason they're out there hunting. Yep. They'll take as much meat off as they can and bring me just the skin because that's all I need. They'll bring me the skin. I'll kind of clean it up a little bit better because they're out there in the field doing it and, you know, I got a nice spot to do it. Clean it up. I salt the hide. I'll send it in for tanning. I'll get the tanned hide back and uh, that's when you do all your measurements. You'll measure up, you know, what kind of form you need. If I'm doing, say, a deer head, you measure, you know, each deer head's not the same. You measure the neck, you know, the nose to eye, all that. Make the alterations as you feel fit. You know, you cut the, cut the foam down and kind of make it to fit your hide. Then you put the clay on there and you do all the musculature, the eye ridges and the eyes and all that. And then you will, uh, essentially, you want to glue that hide onto the mannequin. So there's no more movement. You want to get it, you know, as close as you can. After you have it dry for maybe two weeks or so, depending how long, you know, depending the how much humidity is in the air and what season it is, if you got it being blowed on by a fan, it'll shrink up a little bit. And that's where, you know, you do your detail work after. You'll come in, you'll put the epoxy around the eyes if anything pulled away or whatnot. After that, you'll do your, your fine detail painting, you know, get all that color back in there, use your reference photos and... After then, you're ready for pickup. I did some reading up, too. I heard the eyes are very challenging as well. Is that true or no? It's probably the hardest part is to get them realistic looking. I'm sure you've seen pages of bad taxidermy and stuff like that where stuff's cross-eyed and not looking great. But the first thing people do when they see a piece of taxidermy usually is they go up to the eyes and they look at it because, you know, it's kind of the focal point. So getting those right, very important, yeah. I bet, man. Well. Wow. All right. I, I feel like I've asked a lot. Is there anything I didn't get to? Anything that people would like to know? Mm. Craziest things we've did, probably. I'll touch on that a little bit more. We did yeah. animatronics one time. Okay. Where uh, we actually had to put motors in the pieces and make them move. That was kind of a crazy one to do. Yeah, that's, what was it? Roosters, actually. Turning oh, their heads right. back and forth and kind of looking around. Oh, nice. You, would you put it at Six Flags or something? It was for uh, for an artist, actually. Oh, I nice. think they brought it down to Florida or something like that. Oh, nice. I, you know, you should, um, you know what you got to put a bid in for is Chuck E. Cheese animatronics. <laughs> that thing's classic. <laughs> Imagine the kids. They would hate that. Oh, yeah. I mean, but hey. Even more know. crying going on. Yeah. Remember those shows, dude? Yeah. Chuck E. Cheese? That was, you try and eat some pizza, climb through some tunnels and play some fucking whack-a-mole <laughs> and you got to... Yeah, Chuck in the corner. You ever heard of Jeepers? What is it, Jeepers Creepers? Jeepers. 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 A, kid yeah, yeah. Got, a kid died there. Oh, yeah, I know. I'm well aware. Those places yeah. were scary, yeah. Yeah, well. I think what I do is scary. It was, yeah, well, I mean, he, he climbed. I don't think he was tall enough or he wasn't fully secured. He was or, too tall or something. Yeah, yeah and he climbed out of his seat. And he, he, very sad, very tragic. Yeah. Um, yeah, no, I hear what you're saying, though uh wow well all right uh, you're so back do you want to blast your shit out there where could people find sure. you if they, they want to find me the arctic arctic circle taxidermy uh facebook instagram or just google you know taxidermy in chicago where i'm there and you're just one of the one of the handful one of the handful we're pretty backed up but uh if you need something done give me a call I'll give you a timeline and uh what uh is there a down season is there a better time for people to hit you up than others Hunting season is usually pretty pretty busy in the fall. Yeah. Right now is a good time. Okay, good. Yeah. Good. Well, Peter, thank you. Thank you. This was interesting. Thank you for listening to the show as well. A lot of, uh, of clapback jokes from Peter today. <laughs> um, so, all right then, everybody. Thank you for listening. That's it for today. We'll be back tomorrow. We will see you then.